In the Fischer esterification reaction, we basically transform a carboxylic acid into an ester via a six step reaction mechanism in which we have to break the bond between carbon and oxygen. Now we're going to discuss two other methods by which we can transform carboxylic acids into esters and these mechanisms do not involve the breaking of the carbon oxygen bond and in these two mechanisms the carboxylate ion that is formed in the first step basically acts as a nucleophile as we'll see in just a moment. So let's examine method number one that deals with primary halides. So let's suppose we take a carboxylic acid and we mix it with some base. In the first step, the base basically deprotonates the H atom of this carboxylic acid and we form our intermediate that is resonance stabilized. We have the delocalization, the delocalization of negative charge among these two oxygen atoms. This is known as the carboxylate ion. Now if we take the carboxylate ion and we mix it with a primary halide such as for example a methyl halide then an SN2 reaction will take place in which this carboxylic or this carboxylate ion more specifically this oxygen acts as a nucleophile because there is enough space because we only have H atoms to form a bond at the same time displacing this good enough leaving group and, and so we form in an SN2 reaction an ester molecule as well as our iodide ion. So this is a two-step reaction mechanism in which we can transform a carboxylic acid into an ester without actually breaking the bond between carbon and oxygen. And notice that even though this is not generally a good nucleophile, in this case this isn't good nucleophile because we have a good leaving group as well as enough space for this molecule to attack it from the rear side and undergo the SN2 reaction. Now another similar reaction that is somewhat similar to this deals with diazomethane compound. So if a carboxylic acid is mixed with a diazomethane we can undergo an esterformic reaction in which once again this carboxylate ion as shown here acts as a nucleophile to form an ester product. So let's suppose we take the carboxylic acid and we mix it with our diazomethane which looks something like this. We have a positive charge on the middle nitrogen and a negative charge on this carbon. So this carbon basically acts as a base because it has those two electrons grabbing the H off of the carboxylic acid and forming this resin stabilized intermediate, the carboxylate anion. And now this acts as a nucleophile and it displaces this good leaving group, our diatomic nitrogen. So once this is protonated, we form this molecule here, which contains enough space because we only have H atoms and a good leaving group. So this displaces this car or it displaces this N2 group and attacks this carbon from the rear side via an SN2 reaction. And so just as we form our ester compound here, we also form the ester compound here from our carboxylic acid without actually breaking the bond between carbon and oxygen. So although these two methods are less efficient than the actual Fischer esterification reaction and these two reaction mechanisms, we do not actually have to break the carbon oxygen bond in our carboxylic acid. So we see that under certain conditions, the carboxylate anion can act as a nucleophile to directly form an oxygen carbon bond of our final product, the ester product.